Welcome to Electrified, it's your host, Dylan Loomis. Important reminder, Tesla stock will begin trading on an adjusted basis tomorrow, so don't wake up and see Tesla stock price somewhere around $300 a share and freak out. It's because of the split. In case you were hoping to kick off today's episode with some pictures of Elon from college, well, today is your lucky day. Elon's college fling, Jennifer Gwynn, is auctioning these photos to help pay for her stepson's education, but just wanted to share the images of this young Elon on. I thought they were pretty funny. Referring to Elon, Jennifer did say he was very intense, very focused on his studies. Back then, he was always talking about electric cars. So that's the real love story that's lasted. Here's a look at the three different options for the location for the blind spot camera in the latest update, 24.5. Of course, you'll never please everyone. Some people still want this to be bigger, but at least we're moving in the right direction and it's no longer relegated to the bottom left, which is usually blocked by your arm. Now, this update has been out for a little while, but I think a lot of people are still unaware of it and some people definitely don't have it yet, but you can see apply brakes when regenerative braking is limited. It is an option you can turn on or off. To date, regenerative braking hasn't worked when the battery is full because it can accept more charge and it's also been inconsistent in colder climates. So overall, this has led to inconsistencies in the driving experience. When you get used to taking your foot off the accelerator and experiencing that regenerative braking and then having it not be there, it can be a little jarring. Tesla has fixed that issue with this new option to make the car perform the same with or without regenerative braking. Now the car will automatically apply its regular brakes to simulate that regenerative braking when the battery is full and presumably in colder climates. Tesla said your car can now automatically apply regular brakes for consistent deceleration when regen braking is limited due to battery temperature or state of charge. Should be noted so far it's only available to some Model 3 and Model Ys. Unfortunately, we have to talk about this because people are taking Elon's reaction and using it as more ammo to fire right back at him. James Locke said, unfortunately, I have to say, still having to intervene to correct 10.69, still a lot of work to do. I know this is probably not a popular opinion, but focusing on the Chuck complex left turn is getting ahead of the needs of some more basic control issues. He did say more than just that original tweet though before Elon replied. He said, FSD beta is still having issues with getting into a right turn lane. In my humble opinion, increasing the cost for FSD beta now is a little premature given the ongoing issues across so many situations. And he concluded, saying the progress from the autopilot team is insanely impressive, but so much work to do. At this point, I just wanna say, James is a valuable member of the Tesla community. He's been an avid Tesla supporter now for years. I've watched many of his videos over the years, and I would encourage everyone to take a minute Put yourself in James' shoes, you get the new release and you go to Twitter just to share your feedback like most people do, and Elon comes back with this. 10.69 is in limited release for a reason. Please do not ask to be included in early beta releases and then complain. I'm not at all taking sides here, just ask yourself these questions. Was James complaining or was he giving feedback? Genuinely, what do you think? More importantly though, I think too many people are assuming that 10.69 was laser focused on Chuck's left turn just because of the attention that it got and Chuck being highlighted. In all reality, I'm pretty sure that's not the case. And more importantly, this type of tweet just kind of assumes that James knows what's best to focus on more so than Tesla's autopilot FSD team, which of course is laughable. My issue with that implication here is that of course Tesla's team knows about these other issues, but at this time it thought that working on that unprotected left would push solving autonomy further more so than doing anything else. It had nothing to do with Chuck or trying to appease one person, it was just that situation they believed would lead to the greatest step forward for autonomy as a whole. From Elon's standpoint, do I love the way he approached it? No, but at the same time, he's human and like all humans, sometimes certain tweets or things that are said about us hit us in a certain way at a certain time in our lives. And we have to remember this FSD beta really is Elon's baby. It's one of his two main goals this year to get to wide release. He's spending most of his time working on this problem and obviously Elon didn't love the nature of James's tweet. So did Elon go too far? I'm going to leave that one up to you. It's a very nuanced conversation I will, however, say, could James's tweet have been a little bit more constructive and less complainy? Probably. And could Elon's response have been a little bit more compassionate? Yes. But at the end of the day, a week from now, this will be a big nothing burger.
Two quick things, if you're using the same password for multiple accounts or logging into these accounts with Facebook or Apple logins, I used to do this and ultimately it blew up in my face. This led me to doing a ton of research on password managers and now I'm using NordPass. And yes, they are the sponsor of today's video, but as always, I only actually share products or services that have actually impacted my life. NordPass stores all of your passwords and important information in one secure place. Not just logins and passwords though, I have things like my LLC information and pin numbers for all kinds of stuff. And let me tell you, you see these NordPass icons right here? If you've never experienced the magic of password autofill, you're seriously missing out. And yes, this works across all devices. Sharing passwords with family also could not be any easier with NordPass. Honestly, the days of remembering all your passwords should be over. You really should use a password generator. Of course, NordPass has you covered. You just set all the parameters and then hit refresh. It'll create a new password for you. You can copy it, put it where you need it, and you're ready to go. And check this out, anytime you create a new account online, you can simultaneously generate a secure password and store the credentials in NordPass, sorting the site in your folder of choice to stay organized. So head to nordpass.com slash electrified linked below and you can use coupon code electrified to get NordPass's best two year offer and four additional months for free. For me with hundreds of different logins and dozens of secure notes, NordPass has quite literally simplified and secured my life in a very meaningful way and I would encourage you to check it out. We've heard a lot about this new proposed legislation over the last few months, but it looks like tomorrow this will be going into effect. So effectively, California will be banning the sale of new gasoline powered cars by 2035. Former head of the EPA's emissions program said California will now be the only government in the world that mandates zero emission vehicles. It is unique. There are interim targets before 2035 requiring that 35% of new passenger vehicles sold in California by 2026 produce zero emissions, climbs to 68% by 2030, ahead of the nation's goal of 50% by 2030. This is bigger than just California, however, because typically around 12 or so other states just follow California's lead when it comes to emission standards. If those states follow through, the restrictions on gasoline vehicle sales would apply to about one third of the United States auto market. As I've said before, if the raw materials and supply chain industries can keep up, hopefully the market really takes care of most of this over the next 13 or so years, but it's good to have it in place as an extra force pushing other automakers toward electrification. Knowing that bans like this are looming and not just being talked about. Wait times for the Model Y long range have shortened just a bit. Now with the standard Gemini wheels, estimated delivery is March through July, Previously, it was April through July. Changing to the 20 inch induction wheels still on the long range, estimated delivery is now December through April. Previously, it was January through April. So both of those models now potentially available one month sooner. Bloomberg Law just uploaded a podcast with Brian Baxter, who in part broke the news about David Searle, Tesla's chief legal officer, deciding to resign and leave the company. The one that Tesla Twitter said was false and said David Searle has not left Tesla. There's some more nuance to this word. To be fair, Tesla did not outright say or confirm that David Searle was indeed still head of Tesla's legal team. Also important to note that David Searle was in an active position, not a permanent one. This is important because I know some Tesla investors worry about this rotating door in this position. There have been, you know, six different people in this role over the last few years. However, what you need to understand is one, Tesla has no shortage of applications for this position, which Brian Baxter has confirmed. There are plenty of lawyers out there that would love to have this role because it's a major high profile position and even holding it for a short period of time is a huge resume booster and most likely would result in other tech companies wanting to poach you in the future. And second, we know that working for Tesla in general isn't for everyone. And when you factor in this position specifically, very high stress, basically 24 seven high pressure environment. And of course, working for Elon is not always easy. So turnover at this position is somewhat to be expected for those two reasons alone. My point is I wouldn't worry about this narrative at all. It could actually work out to be a good thing for Tesla because they're just trying out different candidates until they find somebody that fits the role and is cut out to handle everything that that entails. They just haven't found that person yet. 
Billionaire venture capitalist John Doerr has come out and said passing on Tesla was one of his biggest regrets. That's probably the worst investment decision of all time, passing on investing in Tesla stock in the early days. I would argue that over the next 15, 20 years, passing on Tesla stock right now could leave you in a similar position in the future. When John was asked, what's the biggest mistake investors typically make? They're too short-sighted. They sell too early. The great gains in Amazon or Google came along after the company went public. Now, swinging to the other end of the spectrum, apparently there's a culture in Korea where many families are doing the opposite and going all in on Tesla as a way to get out of this economic inequality in the country. Now, don't get it twisted. I'm not encouraging this type of behavior. I just wanted to point out individual South Korean investors have plowed around $15 billion into Tesla stock. Apparently they call themselves Teslums, blending the words Tesla and Islam to show the strength of their faith in the company. Some sign off on tweets with the word to men, their play on Tesla and amen. Choosing to look past that, I just wanted to show you this data. Holders of Tesla stock, Elon Musk around 15%. Retail investors, as we mentioned yesterday, around 13%, excluding this South Korean cohort. You can see some other institutions. And then these South Korean retail investors coming in at around 1.6%, more than the other fund managers we talked about last week, Natixis and some other big holders. Just validating the point that I made yesterday, Tesla is very retail strong. Looking at the percent of shares held by institutions for these big companies, Tesla is significantly lower at 46%. Once again, whenever these institutions wake up and smell the roses, they're gonna have to buy some of these Tesla shares from the retail community who won't be quick to give them up. When it comes to Tesla's expected earnings for 2023 and 2024, Gary, who is somewhat conservative relative to guys like James and Matt, who obviously understand Tesla incredibly well, and I would argue much better than Wall Street, Gary is already well ahead of the Wall Street consensus. Once again, another tailwind over the next two years. Just so you know, for Ray for Tesla's tweet, I did go ahead and translate the images just to confirm, but the translations are pretty rough. However, it does check out. It's ironic and all coming for circle because China's info of ministry and tech is saying that no other automaker in China would be profitable without government subsidies, something that Tesla bears used to throw at Tesla all the time. And now Tesla is the only automaker in China that's actually profitable without government subsidies. Without the subsidies, BYD would have lost around $2.1 billion. But just for what it's worth, comparing Tesla to BYD is a fool's errand. They're very different businesses. So just know that while they both do indeed sell new energy vehicles, their actual business models and what they focus on are really very different. I told you guys I'd follow up on that hot chips conference for Tesla this week. Here is an article from that event, but it's very technical. So if you're into that, I'll link it below. SpaceX is trying to work through its massive backlog with a new best effort tier. The company has emailed select US customers with a new tier of internet services. And it said this tier should expect to get full speeds in mid 2023. This new best effort tier uses the same hardware, but you have the option to pause the service as you would await to be upgraded to a full residential customer. So yes, you can pause and unpause at any time while waiting. However, canceling your best effort service will cancel your place in line for the full blown residential service. And they did say online gaming, video calls, and streaming in 4K would not be possible. On that note though, this afternoon, Elon tweeted, this is something special. Retweeting a SpaceX tweet tomorrow night, 7 p.m. Central Time, Elon and T-Mobile's Mike Sievert will announce plans to increase connectivity. You can tune in to watch live. I'll have the link below. Given that this announcement is with T-Mobile, that should give you a hint at what they'll be talking about. Many of you know, I really want the public to understand Tesla is all about safety. And I came across this clip today and wanted to share it. Tesla has a unique, specially designed passenger airbag that pretty much engulfs the passenger and hugs their head with little marshmallow wings to protect against angled or offset crashes. Tesla made this special airbag because studies have shown that deaths still occur when vehicles have airbags in these kind of small overlap or oblique or angled crashes. Hundreds, if not thousands of these little innovations that go overlooked by most people 
really could be the difference in saving a life or not. And a crucial tweet from Simon Morse to wrap up today, the cost of lithium ion batteries is plateauing. The easier economies have been met through gigascale. Now the limiting factor on the supply chain is mining and refining. Good segue, Sunday will be the upload of part two of our exclusive interview with the nickel industry CEO. If you saw part one, of course, you know who it is. But for those of you that haven't, Sunday upload, don't forget. And perfectly, Simon concluded this tweet saying, to dominate EVs and batteries, you need mining. In 2015, raw materials accounted for about 40% of the lithium ion battery cell costs. Fast forward seven years to now, and raw materials make up 70 to 80% of the lithium ion battery cost. Don't forget to check out NordPass and that exclusive offer. I kid you not, I absolutely love this app and I have no idea how people live without a password manager. Please like the video if you did. Hope you guys have a wonderful day and a huge thank you to all of my Patreon supporters.